Hello everyone! Today we read Tales from Retail, where grandmas wait, grandpas defend their constitutional rights, Karens are being Karens, and kids steal candies. Please subscribe for daily videos with the best stories from all over Reddit. Let's go! So I work in a section of grocery store that sells alcohol and tobacco. Unfortunately, my co-workers and I have to scan everyone's ID that buys because we don't have the managerial abilities to bypass and type it in manually, which I understand and agree is annoying, but it's something out of my control. They are more than welcome to wait for a supervisor from up front to do it, but it takes a few minutes and it holds up the line. Of course, some people don't care about others and they choose to hold up the line. Basically, it's faster just to give me your ID. It takes two seconds, but yet they'll have no problem whipping their debit card or store savings card out though. Yesterday, a guy in his 60s came to buy alcohol and I ask for his ID. He immediately gets mad and starts yelling at me. But what really topped the cake was when he said, I know my rights! This is against my constitutional rights! I wonder if he says that to cops when he gets pulled over too. Probably not though. I honestly couldn't help but laugh because it was so effing ridiculous. He ended up not getting the alcohol because he wasn't willing to give me his ID or wait for the manager. Well, I guess it sucks to be him. I'm never going there again. Feel good tale here. I work at a vape shop and an elderly woman came in today wanting a different tank. She said there is nothing wrong with the one she's using, but she was pressed into buying it at another shop and the employee wouldn't budge on showing her anything else. She said it was way too big and powerful for her and she loved that other than that she liked the quality. She also brought in a very old model tank with missing glass saying that if we had the replacement gloss for it, she will just go back to using it instead. I told her I'll check. We have tons of glass, but not that exact one, so it'll take me a hot minute to see if we had a cross-compatible one. My co-worker entertained her while I searched and I heard her say that she's going to call her daughter to let her know she's going to be late. I thought she was going to complain that I was taking so long, I was searching as fast as I could, but finding your replacement glass is a tedious process when you don't have the exact one. Instead, I heard her say how happy she was that she found a shop where the employee was going above and beyond for her and that she would be coming here from now on. After 5 to 10 minutes of searching, I came back empty-handed and she opted to just buy a new smaller tank. As she's looking through her options, I point out that if she likes everything about the one she has aside from the size, we have basically the half-sized baby version. Her face lit up when I pulled it out as it was the one that originally came with her device and the one she'd been searching for, but didn't know enough about them to ask for it by name. She said that the only reason she was stuck with the giant version was because she had pointed it out at the other shop saying, the one I want is this, only smaller, but the guy insisted that only the big ones exist. They hadn't even shown her how to properly use it. She was dumbfounded at all the new information I was giving her about setting it up and using it. She left promising that she's only stopping by our shop from now on as well as the rest of her family. I just wonder if it was really an elderly woman who wapes or it was the perception of OP who thought she was older than she really was. Some years ago, I worked as the shop assistant and cashier in Danish German grocery retail company in the UK. The shop was located in a northern English seaside town and I swear the area was a high density of Karens for the size of the local area. The four years that I had worked there was alright I guess, the pay was good and would get some crackling deals on my shopping while sharing a house with mates. But the bad times overweight the good and has become clear recently from one of the mates I lived with had told me that I had a healthy drinking problem back then. Still have recurring dreams about the place at times and pretty Pretty sure the odd night terror. Now to the main thing of this story. This about working with a Karen who made everyone's, including the duty manager job, more of a pain in the butt than it ought to be. And the job would be smoother when she had her days off. 
Oh, she had the haircut and the works. Each teal was equipped with a belt to communicate with other employees in the back and on the shop floor. It was pretty much a black and white plastic doorbell button. One ring of the bell was to summon a floor assistant. Two is for another cashier to open up another till. Three is for the duty manager and the long continuous ring is for shoplifters. Most Saturdays were our busiest days in the week when most of the general public are off work for the weekend and the advertised weekend specials would have been stocked. If one imagines being in a town square throwing down breadcrumbs and huge flock of pigeons descend to squabble over them crumbs. This was pretty much like that, but all the pigeons are the local and non-local Karens or male equivalents. It was always a crab show on Saturdays and these busy times would come in waves. It would be bouncing in the evening, dead late in the morning, bouncing again before lunch and be on and off the rest of the day. From what I can recall, it was myself, another cashier I will call, Dan, our duty manager and entitled Karen and probably someone else on the shop floor. Dan and Karen were always put on the main cashiers for the day. Not saying this to be harsh, but they were useless working anywhere else and were somewhat more suited on tills than stocking shelves. I got called to jump onto another of the four operational tills for a rush of customers. I didn't fully hate being on the till, but it definitely wasn't my favorite job and it did help with my confidence. The only times that I dreaded being on is when things go wrong and feel the impatience from everyone waiting in the queue. This time it was an item that wouldn't scan properly or was some loose fruit or, or vegetable. It still had a list of codes for loose stuff and anything else that the stocking system struggles to register. Each week these were updated, then would go missing and only one cashier would have them all. These papers will without fail be on the first till that had to be open all throughout the day as it was the only one with the tobacco stand and valuable limited stock. I turned around to identify who was on the till behind me to ask if he had the codes and noticed he too was having code problems. The queue was building up even more at this point along with my anxiety. Me, Dan, have you got the code for this? Sorry, I do not and I have been asking Karen for them. Karen, have you got the codes for this? Karen snapped back. Do you mind? I'm in the middle of a conversation. She was chatting to one of her many Karen maids who were regular to the shop. They too had the haircut, blonde with a dark long fringe. At that point I was beyond annoyed and most times it takes a lot for me to get that livid. I couldn't say anything as it wouldn't be professional whatsoever and I needed that job. I can't recall how I got the codes but it was resolved and without the help from Karen. Through the day I was fuming. It was only myself and Karen who were trained to work in the tills in the evening. It had quietened down by then and the wagon had turned up with the new stock and had to be offloaded. Which is when on cue, on every one of entitled Karen shifts, she would ask for someone to cover for her as she needed a smoke. Which wouldn't be a shift rig as of all that time had been used and been asked as a favor. Come on, let me off. I'm gagging for a ciggy. Sometimes this happened when the frozen goods had come off the wagon and had to be worked there and then not to lose the stock and she knew this. Don't think I let her have her sick break that time and couldn't have been have caused the following argument. Note, I cannot remember word for word what went down, but this is the gist of it. Each cashier was responsible to cash up their own floats and could end up being investigated with a possible disciplinary if their total taking for the day didn't match up with what was on the system. It was rare for entitled Karen to get it right on the second try due to counting errors, a miracle on her first try and she would have a pop at anyone that distracted her from counting. Karen, my head is all over the place. And I need a smoke. Why couldn't anyone let me off for one earlier? Because the frozen had come off the wagon when you rang. I wouldn't have messed up with my total if my hat wasn't in a mess. Then she continued rattling on about this for a bit until she mentioned about the stress she had to deal with earlier when the queue was massive and I just lost all of my crap at that point. You what? Was this the time me and Dan were asking you for the codes? Yeah. Did you have them? Yeah. 
Why the F did you not give us the codes instead of guessing to your mates? You were interrupting me while I was having an important conversation. How dare you talk to me like that? Then our duty manager came and said, the pair of you shut the F up and finish with your totals so we can get out. I think I went off on one in front of both duty manager and entitled Karen. I was raging and to the point where I went numb. I got out and back home, gotten crap faced that night and rolled into work the next morning hanging out of my butt. I caught a kid trying to steal candy from work tonight. And that little kid knew what he was doing too. So I was working at the self-scan and so there is eight units I watch over so I pass like a lot. And I saw that little kid grab some candy from the shelf and I didn't think anything about it until he saw me walking that way. Because like I said, I was pacing back and forth from machine to machine and he turned tail and ran the other direction and out of the self-scan and the route to behind a wall that separates the self-scan from the main like half of the store. So I walk back th that way and when I look around there to see why he hightailed it behind, there I saw that he no longer had two things of candy in his hands, he only had one. And when he walked past me, I saw him fiddling with something in his coat pocket and since I was so much taller than he was, I was able to see it was the other thing of candy. So I followed to his mother and told her what he had done. Then she gave him this look. Oh boy, this was his first time doing something like this. He pulled it out of his pocket and tried to hand it to her. She made him put both back and gave me a bag of chips she was going to buy him and told him to go sit on a bench nearby. Oh boy, I guess he's in trouble. In very big trouble. Also, here are the links to more Reddit videos on my channel. Check them out. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more. Bye!